If you've been following this channel, then you know that recently we've tried beating a couple of new Super Mario Bros. games without touching any brick blocks. Now I'd say it's time to give it a whirl in their hipper, younger, harder cousin, New Super Luigi U. That's right, today we seek the answer to the question, is it possible to beat New Super Luigi U Deluxe without touching a single brick block? The rules are exactly the same as the last two times we tried this challenge. We are trying to hit all the way through the game and beat the final boss without ever touching a brick block. You know, those block-shaped things in Mario games that are made of bricks. For our purposes today, that doesn't include things like question mark blocks, note blocks, or the like. We are trying to avoid brick blocks. With that established, let's play some levels. Our first level, Waddle Wing Warding, has a few instances of bricks that you might run into if you're careless. Good thing then that I'm not careless. Another thing to keep in mind about this level is that it's a wonderful place to get a squirrel suit, which will likely be quite useful going forward. Now for level 2, Crooked Cavern, which features this section, which I failed a lot at. It's just that this gap is such a tight squeeze that it seems near impossible to get through it without touching a brick. It can be done, though. If you, with a squirrel suit, cling to the side of the gem while it's tilted up, then you should start sliding down as the gem starts to tilt down. That's a good thing. If you then burst up with the squirrel suit as soon as you fall off the gem, but before you touch the bricks, then you should be able to land safely beyond the bricks on the gem. So yay, we navigated the obstacle. But there's no time to relax, we've got a little over a minute on the clock and this next section to contend with. Not to worry though, this part really isn't that bad if you have a plan. My plan was while the gem I'm standing on was tilting to the right, to jump up, burst, and cling to the other side of the gem we were clinging to earlier. Then we wait to slide down a bit and for the tilting to be in our favor, at which point clearing those last bricks is no trouble. Now all we need to do to be done with this level is find the secret exit, which you access by doing this. So we can't do this for obvious reasons. I guess we'll just have to go the long way around and take the normal exit, which luckily doesn't add any more roadblocks to this level. We may have to take the long way, but at least the levels immediately following Crooked Cavern have little to no brick related issues. We next experience serious strife during Lemmy's Lights Out Castle. The expectation here is that you'd turn these coins into bricks, which you would then use to safely cross over these munchers. We'll be taking a different approach. That approach being just running across the munchers. Sure, you'll take some damage, but that's a small price to pay for not touching bricks. Also, this warp pipe secret area can help reduce how much damage you take. So that's Acorn Plains behind us now. Let's see what awaits in Layer Cake Desert. First up is Spike's Tumbling Desert, which admittedly has a lot of bricks. They are, however, easily avoided if you just stick to the low road and don't hit this P-switch. We then get the chance to catch Nabbit and... Eh, why not? We do get a PA horn out of it and it's really not that hard. Next up, Underground Grolls has a few bricks on the ground that you certainly should be careful around, but I don't think I'd call them difficult to avoid. Then Windup Tower doesn't, as far as I'm aware, contain a single brick. Now the next level we're taking on should be quite interesting, as it's our next opportunity to take a big shortcut. Welcome to The Walls Have Eyes. From a brick's perspective, beating this level is pretty easy. Now how about that secret exit? Oh. That's how you access it? Again? Hey Nintendo, you do realize there are other ways to hide secrets, right? Okay. I guess we can't take this shortcut either. So we just have to beat the level normally, taking special care to avoid stepping on where those bricks were hidden just beneath the surface. Spinning sandstones doesn't have much to worry about from a brick's perspective, and just like that, we're at Wharton's Lava Block Castle. A level with a star coin surrounded by bricks, which is easily avoided, but also a level 
that has unseen bricks right below this sign, which can be easily avoided as long as you know they exist. We fight a brickless boss fight and then find ourselves having to make a choice. Sparkling waters or frosted glacier. After much consideration, it was decided that sparkling waters would be the route we take. Huckett Beach Resort does contain bricks, but there is not much difficulty to be had in avoiding them. I don't think Urchin Refromp even has any bricks. Shish Kebab Tower does have a couple, but they are quite out of the way. The next stop on our journey is the secret exit of Haunted Cargo Hold, which finally does not require breaking through bricks to access. In fact, not only is getting this secret exit possible, it's really easy. To actually take advantage of that secret exit, we have to go through Beanstalk Jungle, which as far as I can tell does not contain a single brick. Alright, here we are at Rock Candy Mines. Our first level here, Mount Fuzzy, actually has a fair bit of obstacles to contend with, first being these bricks that you normally jump on to ascend the nearby cliff. These can be subverted by jumping from the question mark block, or if you're feeling fancy, spin jumping off the cliff itself. This part looks scary, but as long as you let yourself down gently and have good timing, it's really no big deal. Then this last jump is tough to make while both not touching bricks and not getting hit by a fuzzy. So what we do is choose the lesser of two evils and tank the fuzzy hits. Next up is Porcupuffer Cavern, which is comparatively much easier. Then comes Smashing Stone Tower, which, just generally speaking, has a lot of bricks in it. They, of course, aren't unmanageable. Until we get to this floor, that is. As far as I see, you have two options here. Platform up using the bricks, or cannon through the bricks with a warp pipe. Neither of those options are very suitable for our purposes. I think for now, our best course of action would be an attempt to skip this level entirely. If that's our way forward, then we've got our sights set on a certain secret exit in Soda Jungle. To get there, we'll have to start by properly playing through the rest of Sparkling Waters. First things first, beating Haunted Cargo Hold normally, which is just as easy as getting the secret exit. Next up is Water Spout Sprint, which features a few bricks, albeit none that are difficult to avoid. Then Dragon Eel Depths does have some bricks that require conscious thought to avoid. Luckily, the fact that it's a water level means that we have great flexibility when it comes to avoiding them. This ring that turns bricks into coins sure doesn't hurt either. Our next major challenge comes in the form of this underwater section of Larry's Trigger Happy Castle. What we have here is a lot of bricks paired with an obstacle that keeps you moving. It's certainly tricky, but certainly possible. You just have to keep your cool and dodge the numerous obstacles presented here. I really don't have a clever strategy or anything, just be good. Oh, and there's this part which looks tricky, but it's actually really easy if you just dive into the water. And with that, we're on our way to Soda Jungle. After we deal with this brickless airship, that is. The first proper level of Soda Jungle is Giant Swing Along, which has some brick-based jumps that look pretty touchy. That being said, I got through this level on my first try, so I guess it really couldn't have been that bad. Heart of Bramble Woods also has a decent quantity of bricks. Good thing in this case, most of them are being stood on by enemies which we can jump on in order to bypass. A Stone Snake Tower has a few instances of bricks, although most of them are destroyed by Grolls before they pose any real threat to us. Which brings us to Boo's favorite haunts, the level with the secret exit we so desperately need. And that secret exit is pretty easy to access. That exit brings us to Parabeetle Parade, which is not all that concerning from a social brick dancing perspective. That lets us get to Meringue Clouds, which is a world that doesn't give us any real trouble at all. How about that? Bowser Jr. Showdown, however, is a bit tricky. This first screen in particular has tons of bricks. Luckily for us, they can all be avoided by simply ducking underneath them. Just make sure you don't fall victim to the hand while avoiding the bricks. Magma Moat has a few big jumps where you have to thread the needle through some bricks. My advice with these would be confidence and timing. These are jumps where you have to pick your moment and full force go for it. If you do that, it should turn out alright. And as luck would have it, the next three levels do not pose any real threat to this challenge, which only leaves us with the final level to take on. And you know what? I've still got a PA corn burning a hole in my pocket. Why not use it now? You know, it really just makes this final level almost boringly easy. 
Oh, and of course the boss fights don't contain any bricks, which means it is possible to beat new Super Luigi U Deluxe without touching a single brick block. There was some rerouting and a couple tricky bits, but we succeeded. If you enjoyed this video, you may want to check out some of my other challenge videos, like this one in the top right where I'm trying to beat new Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe without touching a single brick block. And make sure to subscribe and enable notifications so you can be informed about new videos immediately upon release. And of course, finally, if you have a challenge that you want me to try at some point, go ahead and leave it in the comments. I'm going to need to have something to do after I beat all the new Super Mario Bros. games without touching bricks. But anyways, guys, until next time, I've been Seamacraft, and I'll catch you in the next challenge video, which I will try my best to get out with robotic efficiency. Goodbye. The <laughs> <laughs>